I remember back when I was younger, the importance of being educated meant earning good grades and securing a candidacy in a prestigious university for a bachelor's, master's, or even a PhD degree. And I couldn't help but wonder, does that truly make us successful as individuals in our future professional or, most importantly, in our personal life? Does it really equip us with the ability to manage every challenge that comes our way? I feel that the answer is no, and I will explain why. During my long career as a global executive communication coach, I had the opportunity to work with smart people from across the globe coming from top-notch universities. These people did have amazing technical achievements, yet almost all struggled with the one skill that seemed to get in their way in every aspect of their life. I remember one person in particular, his name was Daniel, who even though was educated and really intelligent, always created conflicts in his professional and personal environment and constantly struggled to communicate his true intention whenever he had to interact in a collaborative manner with his peers and family. How many people are like Daniel? From my experience, many. And actually, that is no surprise. I can tell you without any doubt that the number one skill people struggle with the most, no matter their professional and educational titles, is the skill of communication. Even though they might have all the technical skills to solve any complex problem that comes their way, they fail in communicating their perspective. They fail in influencing their audience to support their idea or proposal. So, as a professional and as a mom, I asked myself, where does it all start? And this is what I have observed. Classrooms around the world, may it be a school or a university class, often focus most attention on literacy, math, or even specialized courses, just because the skills are considered to be foundational and are the ones that students are tested for. Communication, though, goes much further than the traditional classroom of the written or spoken word. The purpose of communication is to build and grow connections with others at an emotional level. This is where traditional classroom teaching falls short and life learning kicks in. So, the earlier you master communication skills, the better for you and others, because good communicators aren't born, they are grown. In reality, communication skills such as empathy and building trust, active listening, conflict resolution, influence, must be explicitly taught just like other skills in educational institutions starting from an early age. According to World Economic Forum in their study on skills of the future and how young people think that took place on July 15, 2020 during World Youth Skills Days, one of the top skills that is needed for the future are soft skills. Soft skills are human skills. They are qualities that are innate to your personality and aren't, at least for now, part of a formal education like a college degree. More specifically, communication skills are the most important amongst all soft skills. Why? Because the way we communicate shapes our world and the world around us. As Aristotle, the legendary Greek philosopher, once said, man is by nature a social animal, an individual who is unsocial, naturally, and not accidentally, is either beneath our notice or more than human. Society is something that precedes the individual. As a mom of a teenager, I asked myself this question. Wouldn't it be far more efficient and productive for the society if communication skills were taught as an integral part of formal education from a young age, instead of acquiring that knowledge in our 30s, or even later, or sometimes never at all? Just imagine for a second. If you knew back then what you hopefully know now, how would your communication be different? Do you feel that knowing what, how, and when to communicate your message will ever become obsolete? On the contrary, an important component of adult life is social interaction. 
Every aspect of our health is affected positively or negatively depending on the way we communicate with others, which fosters both emotional and physical health. Not only that, communication is also the vehicle for driving change. Have you ever wondered just how easier my life would have been if I knew how to influence my teacher, boss or friend? How could have Daniel's communication challenges be avoided or at least dealt with if he used a solution-focused manner that would avoid causing himself and others frustration? In turbulent times where digital communication, remote work and social distancing due to COVID-19 dominates our world, where emojis replace words of how we feel and express our wants, the future of effective communication looks far from bright. One skill that will never fade until the moment we close our eyes is communicating with another person. And it is impossible to not communicate because actually even when we do not communicate, we communicate. So why do both our education system and us as individuals need more than ever to teach our children how to communicate effectively? And most importantly, how can we do it? The answer is simple by just asking yourself this question. How would you like your friends and family to have communicated with you when you were younger? Or even now, this powerful question will lead you to take some small steps you can use to optimize your everyday communication with anyone. Step number one is communicating with empathy and never miss a chance to build trust. If you have empathy, you can be a better leader as well as a better follower at all stages of your life. Being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes helps you effectively understand their needs, motivations, and most importantly, their fears. And this is how you can build rapport and trust with others, which is the magic ingredient of a successful communication. This incident happens often to me, and I'm sure that has happened to you. How many times has someone asked you, how are you? And when you start sharing with enthusiasm how your day was, suddenly they interrupt you and they start sharing with you how their day was. Personally, I have been a victim of this toxic behavior once too often. I know it is frustrating. And the reason that happens is because the majority of people do not really listen. They are failing in applying step number two, global listening which is the ability to listen to someone else talk with the intention of genuinely hearing what they are saying and without the intention of formulating a response. It is also about noticing their verbal and nonverbal cues, like the tone of their voice, their pace while speaking, their body language and facial expressions, as well as the words, positive or negative, they choose to communicate with you. By doing that, you successfully manage step number three, conflict resolution. Conflict often happens as a result of poor communication. That was something that I needed to explain to Daniel in our story. When he reacted to conflict situations that he faced, he allowed emotions to lead his words and actions rather than keeping his emotions in check and focus on the actual issue or behavior instead of the person. People that are self-aware of how they can apply empathy, listening, looking for win-win solutions rather than create tension, ultimately can influence others. By being able to persuade in your interactions with others, your ideas can gain ground and create change, hopefully for the better. Can you imagine if we had a more serious approach through our parenting and through our educational system, how easier it would be for us to be seen and feel heard from others, while at the same time we would interact with them in the exact same way? One phrase that I tend to use quite often when I talk with my son and with people around me is that communication works for those who work at it. Let me ask you something. How many people say they want to have a perfect body, yet constantly find excuses for not exercising at all? Well, the same applies to our communication skills. Only when we nurture them and start listening to others can we empower our relationships, 
spread our ideas, and ultimately enjoy authentic, professional, and personal success. Thank you.